Hey folks, welcome to Good Enough Customs. Today, I'm gonna be working on my truck, Big John. Uh, Big John is a, a 1990 Chevy crew cab dually, one ton truck. Uh, I picked this truck up a little over a year ago. Um, I think last August, year ago August. Um, picked this guy up for for a steal, I basically paid about 1800 bucks for this truck. Um, took and put uh, a switch, 6.8 suspension drop on it. Uh, put helper bags back here in the back. Uh, got rid of the rear bumper, put on a roll pan. Uh, let's see, had to rebuild the rear axle, did a disc brake conversion uh, on the rear. I'm trying to remember who I got the disc brake conversion from. It was, uh, I want to say lug nut or something like that. Yeah, it was lug nut four by four. Is uh, they had a disc brake conversion. There's my pup, there's my buddy Crockett. Um, yeah, lug nut four by four had a disc brake conversion for that Dana 70 uh, that's in there. So up front, it was a drop spring, uh, drop uh, spindle. And I uh, had to rebuild all the brakes up front. All the steering was shot. Put new steering on it. <coughs> um, new steering box. And pardon me, I've been fighting a head and chest cold. So uh, then we got up underneath the hood and uh, put a new, uh, it's actually a Reman Lawn Block 454. Um, put that in there. Pulled all the electronic garbage off of it because the previous owners had butchered every lick of wire in this thing. So uh, I wasn't about to try to troubleshoot all that. So I went ahead and pulled all that off. Dropped the, uh, I forget what I've even got on here. It's a Speedmaster low rise intake. Um, and then it's got an Edelbrock 750 carb on it. It's still, still got the, uh, uh, 400 turbo training under it um basically replaced everything mechanical on this truck except for the uh the transmission uh the body was not shiny whenever i got it it was extremely faded so wet sand above the whole truck just cleaned it up as best i could you can still see you know some of the paint it doesn't look great they'll coat a wax on it, it shines it back up a little bit but if I sand on this much more, buff on this much more, there's not going to be any paint left there. Um, you know, it's got some really nice spots where I don't know what happened here, but this was like this when I got the truck. So I'm just like, whatever. Um, it's good enough, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, it, it's one of those. I, I'm not that big a fan of super, super shiny. I do like shiny stuff. It's just I don't really want to own super, super shiny because... Then I'll be scared to drive it. So, anyways, so this is Big John. He's a cool truck. Uh, runs and drives out pretty good. It's, uh, here we are coming up on Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm wanting to drive it. Um, about a little over an hour drive to visit with family and all. And uh, a couple months ago, found a wonderful puddle down here in the floorboard. So I disconnected the uh, heater core and uh just rerouted the hoses up underneath the hood until i had a chance to get around to it and that was back in the summer and now it's getting cold <laughs> um so i, I want to drive the same but i'm not able to but it has no heat so i've got to go ahead and get this heater core swapped out so i'm going to do that today um and try to get that knocked out i figure I might as well show y'all guys what's going on with that i've actually never done a heater core on one of these before it uh I've, I've always been lucky. They've never never been bad on me. I've always had them where uh, heater core works just fine. So, so I guess we'll learn this one together. Uh, I've, I've, I understand what all has got to be done on it. I've just never physically done it. So, <clears throat> so we'll get cranking on this here in just a few minutes as soon as I kind of figure out what all in the world we got to do, which doesn't look too bad. But uh, we'll get rocking and rolling on this here shortly, and I'll uh, I'll catch you back up here in just a minute. So the glove box door's got to come out, um, and what you have is 
you got screws, four of them. At least I've got four of them down here. Now this one, right after I got the truck, the plastic hinge, I guess you would call it, broke. So uh, I just went to the hardware store, picked up a piano hinge, cut it down to size, and drilled some holes through it and uh, used that so I don't ever have to worry about that thing breaking again. <clears throat> so, set that there. We'll go ahead and pull. slack somewhere else I can pull from. I'll probably have to clip this little tie wrap. Let's see if I can't get this out of the way. And then it looks like <clears throat> let's see it looks like we got a bolt there stud there let's see stud there stud way up there let me put a, another light in here yeah so we got a stud my hands blocking it out oh we got a stud right there so those three have to be nuts on the back side or on the engine compartment side so we'll pull those guys here in a minute and then we'll pull this guy and i'll get something to clip that now we're under the hood. I'm going to go ahead and drop the positive cable off. Uh, just so I don't accidentally short something out. Um, anytime, anytime you're working under the hood and working around electronics and whatnot, it's not a bad idea to just disconnect stuff. Um, just to make sure that you don't short stuff out. Because, you know, that's, that's never fun. You don't want to burn your truck down or car or whatever you don't want to burn them down to the ground so uh yeah, so I got a little bit of stuff going on there might need to clean that terminal anyways so that's disconnected all right looks like we've got bolt or that stud right there um, and the two are going to be on the bottom. I don't even know if I'm going to try to get, uh, <laughs> I don't even think I'm going to try to get the, uh, camera down to those. That's going to be a royal pain. It appears like they're, it looks like they're uh, seven sixteenths bolts. So, uh, we'll get to, let's get these guys loosened up. So we're going to get in here and drop this first one. Whew, lucked out. That one didn't go very far. All right. <clears throat> so that's off. We've got a little wiring harness that's held on with the first nut. And there's a second nut behind it. Okay. I apologize for coughing and clearing my throat and all. I'm dealing with this stinking head cold, which has gone into my chest. I almost forgot. I got to disconnect this hose. I already dropped the other one off and basically, basically bypassed the uh, the feed back, you know, from here, the return line, I guess. Uh, disconnected the feed line and just basically pointed that all together. So that way, that all. Just kind of does its thing. I guess we'll follow the old uh, blind squirrel thought 
process here. And maybe we can find a nut down there. All right, so we got the three bolts loose from out here. Now we got to go back inside the cab and pull that one and then start dealing with getting vacuum lines off and some of my wires moved out of the way and all that fun stuff. So we'll pick back up there here in just a second. Back inside here, I've got one up here. I got to drop this nut or this bolt off right here. I'll figure out how to get around all this wiring. Oh heck, that's a 3 eighths. Sitting there trying to crank it loose with a 7 sixteenths. <clears throat> well, maybe I lied, maybe it's not a 3 eighths. What the hell? <sighs> Wonderful 90s GM. It's a mix, some standard, some metric. 10 millimeter. Hopefully I can find one. Alright. So that turkey's out of there. Gotta get this part off, which feeds the, uh, what does that feed? I think that feeds the uh, the dash vents. Um, so I gotta, I gotta pull this block off. So I gotta get whatever size those are, I'm gonna guess 5 sixteenths. And there's one there. I didn't feel any on the back, but looks like we got these two and this one. So I'll grab 5 sixteenths. All right, yeah, so these big wires right here, I ran these for the, uh, this is the LMC uh, relay kit for the power windows. Um, highly recommend, this thing works great. Uh, the driver's side wires were a little short, so that's why they're just kind of routed in front. Typically, I like to try to keep things up and out of the way, but these wires seem to be a little short unless I just didn't route them the proper way to begin with. So these are going to be a bit of a trouble, I'm afraid, but we'll figure something out. I'm, just, I'm sure we will. Oh, hell, there's another one way back there behind the ashtray. Got to drop that screw out. I don't know if I can get back there with the nut driver or not. Well, that didn't help. Although, I can get a long extension, probably get to it through the ashtray. Bottom one's loose, top one does not want to budge. Get that guy moving, I just went out there and put a nut on the end of the stud and gave it a little love tap with a, an extension and a hammer. 
just to get it to start moving a little bit. There it goes. Now, there we go. All right, what's going on up here? So we got wires that are attached to the top of this guy. And I don't know if you can see what we're dealing with in here. But I got these wires. Let's see if I can reposition this so see a little bit better. Drop lights, they are a curse and a blessing. Okay, that's a little bit better. So we've got this little wire bundle right here um, that's attached. There's a little little uh, wire management piece right here. Just snaps up. That lets that on by. Should be able to just tweak it around there. Maybe. Hold your mouth just right. Okay, got that pushed around. What we got here? We got a vacuum line going to the same spot. So let's see if we can push her up a little bit. Let's get that vacuum line around it. Now is not the time to be difficult. slot okay so now that's all loose let's get my terrible wiring that's strung up in the way I'll try to get it out of the way that loose and now let's see all right so it looks like now we got to get vacuum lines disconnected we got to get this line uh, get this cable disconnected um, so we can get I guess that controls the blend doors I'm gonna guess um, Gotta get that dropped off. Gotta get this guy dropped off. Disconnect any vacuum lines that are still there. I need to figure out where that wire harness goes. And then, let's see, we got that vacuum line. Actually, I can just drop it off right here. We got one that goes out to the motor. I don't feel like trying to fish that back through the firewall. So, Oh, there's another clip back there on the back. I don't know if you can see that guy. So we're trying to get that knocked off here in a second. And maybe that's all we got. I'm not sure. We'll find out as we go. I'll be back with you in a minute as soon as I get this stupid box out. All right, got this turkey out. I got him moved over to the workbench. So here's the heater core. You can see here where it's nice and green. That's more likely one of the spots it was leaking out of. So uh, got to pull... This, ba this whole piece right here off, if I remember correctly. Um, actually, I think you gotta pull all these screws out to get this center piece out so you can get to the heater core. So on the back side, this is the back side of it. So this sits up against the firewall underneath the, uh, underneath the dash. So you got your vacuum can here. So you got two vacuum lines that go in here. Um, mine had this clip, which y'all saw me fighting with. Uh, this clip, which I don't think I got on camera, and there was actually a third clip that uh, I didn't see ended up just pulling off. There's also a vacuum line here at the very back. Uh, so disconnect your three vacuum lines. You got your clips that go away. Your uh, your blend cable. Let me get this thing to sit right. Your blend cable comes in here. It bolts down here, and then it ties off here to you know move the door back and forth. So, uh, 
I think I'm going to get started pulling this apart and uh, I can watch and follow along as I go out. Um, I'll probably do a little cleaning while I'm in here too because usually if I pull something out I like to clean it up a little bit um, that way when it goes back in it goes back in you know nice and clean so uh, I'll be back in just a moment and we'll get cranking on this guy all right set y'all up on a shelf here so I can actually you can see what I'm doing down here so I'm gonna just pull all these bolts out and don't mind you see uh, see a couple pumps running around a, I had to run in and get another battery, so I went ahead and brought, brought my doggies out here to hang out with me. They, uh, they enjoy getting to come out to the shop every once and again. Alright, so, two screws. One right down here, one right down here. You can't see the damn things. I'm over here tearing this thing to pieces, trying to figure out where what's holding me up. There's these two damn screws right here. Uh, somebody lost my, my little magnet. more work for myself because I didn't see these two little guys so now I gotta fix my blend door that I broke yeah that's down there I'll find it later okay yeah so that's what I was missing but that guy's still got to come out. Good God Almighty. Now, yep. you got to fix that. Shaft up. See if we can't get her fixed. So there's also a rod for this vacuum can right here that's connected. So, yeah, that dude's pretty filthy. We'll, uh, we'll clean on that here in just a little bit. But now we actually have heater core. Looks like it was leaking up here. I'm probably running all the way down. She's, uh, pretty bad down there so we've got looks like three screws holding her down okay and old heater core is out so this old one's gonna be brass this is probably original to the truck so that's what it's a 90 model so that thing's 31 years old now roundabout so do a quick little check just to make sure size comparison make sure everything's about right that's close enough for government work <clears throat> i would just slap this thing in here but i do want to clean all this corrosion and crap out so i'll uh i'll get some stuff to get <laughs> nasty yeah i'll get in here and clean this mess up and uh yeah, we'll catch back up here shortly. I'm going to clean this up, clean that piece up, and uh, see if I've got some epoxy to repair that this blend door that I freaking broke. That rod was stuck. Anyways, I'll check back in here in just a minute whenever I get done cleaning up some of this mess. All right, so I'll clean this thing up. Got all that corrosion and nastiness out. So a couple things that are, uh, I guess, a common issue. I'll just slide this up here. 
this little guy, um, he was broken right here, right behind the screw head. Um, it's kind of a crappy design if you ask me, but uh, it looks like this thing's supposed to clip in and hold itself. Um, and then the screws there just to kind of make sure it doesn't fall out. But it looks like the heat uh, heat cycling on that plastic has made it shrink in a little bit. So I threw a little, uh, little glue down and a little bit up here on this front side. Maybe it'll hold, maybe it won't. It was broken when I started, so whatever. Eventually I plan on putting vintage air in this truck uh, when I do the come and swap on it. So uh, as long as it gets me something on the on the defrost, I'm, I'm happy with that. That'll be just fine. So uh, this was the part that I broke earlier. It looks like crap, but it's in there pretty solid. So I'm going to call that good enough. Um, so hopefully that'll hold. I'm going to go to putting everything back together. <laughs> if I can remember how everything went back together. So uh, I can set this off to the side. Because I don't need that right now. Uh, let's see. Cleaned all the corrosion crap out of this. Where the, uh, the heater core lives. It was pretty bad. Uh, sorry. Sorry folks fighting this damn cold. Uh, I've been coughing and my nose is running like crazy. So, uh, uh. but anyways, so here's the new core. It's aluminum. So, uh, I'll take and drop this guy in. Hopefully he fits. Should fit. Size difference between them was about, the, they were about the same size. So, Go ahead and slide this on in. All right, heater core installed. So this is the part that I broke. I think it went in here. Pretty certain it did. Yeah, it rode in like this. Now the fun part is, is marrying all this crap back together without stuff falling apart. Try to be just an absolute pleasure. Uh, let's see. So we got our big box. We gotta make sure and get that back together for that little vacuum. Um, I honestly am not sure how I'm gonna get this guy in there. Um, mm. Let's see. I'm gonna put a little dollop of grease on the tip of this. Throw a little grease on it just to make it stick a little bit. So all I need it to do is just not fall out as I'm trying to get it down here in this little section. There we go. So that guy is now reattached. Now, before I go screwing stuff back together for certain, let's make sure everything's seated. Where are we at? Oh yeah, I gotta put the rod back in this guy. Which I believe goes down this one.
up. She's all buttoned back up. I'll take this back over to the truck. Pull my caps off before I go shoving it in or leave them on. I'm not sure. I don't know if they'll fit through the holes in the firewall or not. So we'll see. If they fit, I'll go ahead and leave them on. And just take them off whenever I get up underneath the hood. But uh, <clears throat> well, that's it. Just trying to remember how everything went is the biggest challenge on here. But uh, she's all put back together. It's wiped down. It's not like, you know, sparkling clean or anything. But I took and just some warm soapy water and just wiped everything down and tried to clean down the little spots clean up as much as i could of it so uh well give me a couple minutes and uh i'll see y'all back over at the truck so i gotta hook up the vacuum lines so you got one here one here and then one right here so uh there i think you would probably have to try to get that mixed up to mix up which ones go where um because they're all different lengths and they're basically in, they're in the appropriate spot um hanging off the the firewall here so let's see let me get this guy up and out the way <coughs> let's see if we can't get these hooked up uh, let's see, that goes there. Oh, I don't remember how these stupid things went on. <laughs> All right, so they spin around like so. That just pushes down. And let's see. That goes in there, actually. That one goes back like that, and then that goes right there and hooks. <clears throat> there it goes. So this guy mashes back up against that and then this guy bolts in right there and then this clips on this little stud here so that way it moves your blend door for uh, heat or air so uh, there's no way in the world I'm gonna be able to do this one-handed so what I'll do is get this all hooked up and uh, join back with you here in just a minute now I've got this guy hooked up uh, this guy's hooked back up Although he's probably going to end up breaking again. This is a very weak and poor design. If I was really caring about keeping this and getting the factory AC up and running, I'd probably build a little piece of metal that goes here and just weld a nut to it just to keep it from doing that and breaking. But uh, like I said, eventually I want to go to uh, vintage air on this truck um, whenever I do the diesel conversion. Uh, or if I decide to airbag it, then uh, all that AC crap's got to get out of the way. So, I guess this guy's ready to get shoved back in. I think these caps are going to have to come off. Now, so get everything lined up. Hold your mouth just right. Cross your toes, cross your fingers. Say a little prayer, and it might all line up and go where it's supposed to go <sighs> all right there that's back where it should be needs to be where did my ratchet go there's a the ratchet all 
All right, that guy's in. I guess we'll go back out to the uh, under the hood and go ahead and bolt those down. All right, so I've got three studs on this end. One stud, which is this guy right there. It's actually double nutted. So we got a nut and then we've got a uh, cable hold down that goes on and then another nut. All right, then the two really fun ones, <clears throat> which are the ones you got to kind of hunt for. There we go. Okie doke, so that's all connected now. Only slightly a pain in the butt. So now I'll go back into the cab. And where did you go? Cutting that Joe. There he is. in looped over so that's in place so just got the vacuum line hooked up um this is all bolted done ready to go then i've got to hook this guy up i probably ought to go wipe that down but nah, not going to so drag him back over here where it winds up Get him in place ish. See if I can get that around there. Slide that back over. Anybody ever play Tetris? Or one of them puzzle games that you have to move stuff around like crazy? That's kind of what it's like. Alright. So we got those guys. Let's get that in. You also have to be a little bit of a contortionist on some of this. Me as a fat guy, that is not always the easiest thing in the world, but uh, make do. Well, as you can see, this is uh, not the easiest process in the world. Um, it's not the worst, uh, but it is a pain in the butt. So it took, uh, I think all told, uh, all told it was probably an hour, hour and a half. Um, if I hadn't have broke that freaking, uh, blend door, um, but having to glue up that blend door and then let it heat, you know, heat it up and let it, let it dry and cure really, really well. So it wouldn't break on me as soon as I put it together. Uh, that probably took about an hour, um, to let that thing heat up and cure out. So, uh, uh, I think all told I'm in this about two and a half, maybe three hours. It's something you could definitely do at home. Um, get you some heat running for the winter months. So, uh, only thing left to do is put this, uh, door back on for the glove box. And I'll do that here in just a minute. So I guess that's about it for today on this one. Oh, and again, I apologize. Uh, got some head cold moved into my chest and I'm just feeling like garbage. But I had to get this done. I want to drive this thing for Thanksgiving. Um, one, because it's cool. Two, because it's a lot of fun to drive. I guess that'll do it for now. Uh, the next things I plan on doing with this truck, and I may do it today, may not. Depends on how I feel. Uh, is I think I'm going to go inside and sit down for just a little bit and try to get some of this crap out of my head. <coughs> get some medicine in me and let it start uh, taking hold. Um... So what I will probably do, if I feel like it later, I'll probably come back out here. Um, I've got driveline vibration issue that I need to solve. Um, 
I don't think I have enough angle on the rear drive shaft, so I'm gonna have to jack it up, loosen up the U bolts, um, figure out what angle it's sitting at, and put it. I, I, I talked to a buddy that does these doilies a lot, and he uh, he said about three degrees is what he usually sets them at. So we'll see if that actually works. I don't know if it will. Um, honestly, I don't know what it's set to right now. So uh, I'll have to get in there and get that changed up to maybe take care of some of the uh, the driveline vibrations I'm getting. Um, I'm just worried that I had to replace that that carrier bearing on this guy, and uh, I, I really don't want to do that again. That's a pain in the butt. So uh, I'll possibly, probably come back out here in just a little while and do that, and then. Uh, I'm still having some issues with the front end wanting to wander, so uh, uh, probably going to kick the caster out just a touch. Um, just try to get it to pull back to center a little bit easier so it's not uh, just all over the dang road. So, uh, again, may work on that today, may not. I, I don't know. It just depends on how I feel. So, uh, if I do, I'll film it. You'll see it, and uh, we'll catch you later. Just remember, ain't got to be perfect. Just got to be good enough. Have a good one.